More stories from Grandma Zadok by Arletta Richardson, illustrated by Dora Letter. Chapter 3. Mrs. Carter's Fright Grandma, you never told me you dressed a pig in baby's clothes. What did you do that for? I asked, wondering why my common sense grandma would do such a thing, even when she was a little girl like me. Oh, my friend Sarah Jane and I should have been whipped for that prank. We frightened poor Mrs. Carter nearly out of her senses. If she hadn't been such a kind, forgiving lady, I'm sure we would have been punished severely. Tell me what happened, Grandma, I begged. After I get the bread in the oven, we'll sit on the porch. You can help me pick over the beans for supper. Soon we were seated on the porch and Grandma began. This story happened right on this porch. At least most of it did. It was a beautiful day in the spring, shortly after school was over for the year. Sarah Jane and I were wandering about trying to think of the best way to spend the day. We had about decided on a trip to the woods to look for berries when Ma changed our minds. Don't go too far from the house, girls, she called. Mrs. Carter is coming to spend the day sewing, and she's bringing her new baby. I know you'll want to see her. Of course we did. There weren't a lot of new babies in our community, and Sarah Jane and I both loved them. We even thought Mrs. Carter might let us play with little Lucy, so we hung around the gate and watched the road for the first sight of the Carter's wagon. Very soon it appeared and we watched Mr. Carter drive up to the front porch. After helping Mrs. Carter down from the front seat, he went to the back of the wagon and took out a beautiful baby buggy. Sarah Jane and I had never seen one so fine before. Oh, Mrs. Carter, I said, may we push Lucy around in the buggy? We'll be very, very careful, Sarah Jane chimed in. Mrs. Carter smiled at us. I don't know why not. Just don't go too far from the house. She should go to sleep soon, and then you can put the buggy here in the shade, close to the porch. She laid the baby down, and after admiring her for a few minutes, we began to push the buggy slowly around the yard. Wouldn't it be fun to have a real baby to take care of? I said. Oh, yes, Sarah Jane replied. Our dolls are nice, but they don't move around and cry like a baby does. After what seemed like a very short time, the baby went to sleep. We took a few more turns around the house and even shook the buggy a little to see if she might wake up. Finally, we decided to put the buggy in the shade, as Mrs. Carter had told us to. Then we sat on the edge of the porch and admired the pretty dress and bonnet the baby wore. She looks just like a little doll, doesn't she? Sarah Jane said. Your doll, Emily, is just about that size. Shall we get our dolls and play with them? I agreed, and we brought our dolls and our doll clothes back out to the porch where we could watch the baby as she slept. After a few minutes, Sarah Jane tired of the dolls. I'd rather dress something that moves a little, she said. And then, spotting the cat walking across the yard, she suggested, Maybe we could dress the cat. You might be able to put clothes on your cat, I said but you'll never get a dress and bonnet on this one. He's awfully particular about what he does. I suppose Pep wouldn't like it either, Sarah Jane said, figuring our dog was the next best choice. I'm sure of it, I replied. Besides, his head is too big to fit this bonnet. We sat a few moments longer, swinging our feet back and forth, when suddenly a brilliant thought came to me. I know, how about one of the new baby pigs in the barn? All they do is sleep, but at least they're alive. Shall we get one? Oh, yes, let's, Sarah Jane exclaimed. That would be just right for doll's clothes. So we hurried out to the barn to pick out the cleanest, pinkest piglet we could find. Sure enough, when we had put the dress on that pig and tied the bonnet under its chin, we had what we thought was the next best thing to a real baby. Isn't that cute? Sarah Jane said. We should have thought of this before. She eyed the buggy, which little Lucy was sleeping in. I think we should take our baby for a ride. We can't put a pig in with Mrs. Carter's baby, I protested. She wouldn't like that. Besides, Lucy's still asleep. We might wake her up. Sarah Jane thought that over. Why don't you put the baby on your bed to sleep while we take the pig for a ride? Mrs. Carter wouldn't care if you did that. Okay, she'll be comfortable there. I lifted the baby carefully from the buggy, and with Sarah Jane opening the doors for me, I tiptoed quietly up to my room and put Lucy down on my bed. You'd better put her in the middle so she won't roll off, Sarah Jane suggested. She's not big enough to roll over, I said. 
but I put her as close to the center of the bed as I could and covered her with a blanket. Then we tiptoed out and closed the door. There, Sarah Jane said. She'll probably sleep all morning. Let's take the pig for a ride. So we ran back outside, put the pig in the buggy, and covered it with a doll blanket. It promptly fell asleep, and we had a great time pretending to be fine ladies strolling through town with their beautiful baby. Very shortly, Ma came to the kitchen door. Girls, it would be nice if you would run to the woods and gather some berries for dinner. It won't be long until it's time to eat. Is the baby still asleep? Yes, Ma, I replied. She's asleep. Good. Be sure to leave the buggy in the shade. This small bucket should hold enough berries, she said as she handed us a container. There was nothing for us to do but take the bucket and start for the woods. We'd better hurry, I said, realizing what might happen if we were gone too long. We picked the berries as fast as we could, not even stopping to eat a few now and then as we always did. Still, it seemed as though the bucket would never fill up. At last we had enough and started back to the house. As soon as we reached the clearing and could see the house, we knew we were in trouble. Oh no, Sarah Jane cried as we surveyed the scene before us. Everyone seemed to be in motion. Roy was galloping toward the woods where we stood. Reuben was racing for the barn, carrying something that looked like a small pig in doll clothes, and Pep was running between the two of them, not sure whom to follow. The only still figures were Mrs. Carter, who was lying on the porch steps, and Ma, who was kneeling beside her, wiping her friend's face with a cloth. I think they found the pig, Sarah Jane observed. I nodded. We'd better get moving, Sarah Jane said. We're in for it sooner or later. By this time, Roy had reached us, and he breathlessly reported the news. Someone stole Mrs. Carter's baby and left a pig in the buggy. You're going to get it because it's wearing your doll clothes. I told you Lucy would sleep for hours, Sarah Jane declared impatiently. She didn't even cry to let them know where she was. How did we know they'd look for her before she woke up? I was sure that argument wasn't going to impress Ma because I had used similar logic on her before without success. But the sooner they found out where the baby was, the better off we would be. Once everyone stopped long enough to listen... Sarah Jane and I explained everything, and Mrs. Carter was reunited with her baby. When she saw that Lucy was safe, she told Ma not to punish us. They just didn't think. I know they didn't mean to be bad. They'd better learn to think, Ma replied crossly. Do you suppose you can ring the dinner bell without doing something foolish? She said to me. Soon Pa came in from the field and washed for dinner. Sarah Jane and I sat as quietly as we could, hoping that no one would pay any attention to us and praying that the boys wouldn't tell Pa what had happened. Unfortunately, they didn't need to. Pa sat down, asked the blessing, and looked around the table. Would someone tell me what the fool pig is doing down in the pen with doll rags on? The sow won't even come near her. Pa waited for someone to reply. Sarah Jane and I avoided his glance. Roy spluttered into his glass, and Reuben looked disgusted. Then, to our surprise, Ma and Mrs. Carter began to laugh. Pa laughed, too, when he heard the story, making Sarah Jane and I feel better. Grandma picked up the pan of beans and went to check on her bread. I stood on the steps and looked out over the front yard. I could almost see the buggy and that funny pig. End of chapter 3